All right, Jerry, tell me, how did you get started writing? Well, I, uh, I was teaching English at a high school in Los Angeles, and um, I was, uh, I had a lot of ideas in my head. Um, <clears throat> and um, having been an actor, for quite a few years I kind of gave it up because I was working full time and uh, the creative juices so to speak were still going through me so I decided to pick up pen as, uh, or go to the computer and uh, start writing my thoughts down and I used the uh, milieu of the school, the classroom, the, uh, the uh, educational system in Los Angeles as a kind of uh, <clears throat> base to start my thoughts, my thought processes. And of course I wanted to create a, um, a story built around a crime, kind of a noirish um, setting. And, um, and I chose this idea that the, it would be a teacher uh, who <clears throat> moonlights as a private detective. And uh, once I got that, that, that idea gelled in my head, <clears throat> everything sort of came into place because there was so much drama going on in the school itself and in the classroom that the, uh, the ideas just, just rushed out and started coming into on, on page. And um, I started writing. It was probably around the turn of the millennium, around 2000, 2001, when I... When I started pouring out of me and I really hadn't written it much before that. I tried writing a play, uh, one act, I think I did write a one act, it, uh, it never really got out of my uh, computer but it's there somewhere. Um, but then <clears throat> I decided to write a novel and I uh, became serious about it and, and lo and behold it took a few years but it uh, came through. Tell us about your first novel. Well, it's just a, um, like I said, it's a, he's a substitute teacher <clears throat> in the novel, and, he, and he's struggling to make a living, and um, he thinks that if he could work for a uh, professional detect, prof private detective and learn the ropes, he, he could build his own business and make, make a good, good living and have fun at the same time. It's an exciting, you know, he doesn't like nine to five. You know, he really ha has a problem with it and he figures working a, a job like a PI would be dangerous but exciting and, uh, you know, there'll be some money down the line. So he, he does get a job helping a detective and, uh, but he's, he doesn't really know what he's doing and he messes up. And then he gets involved in a, uh, in a, in a, a murder, uh, some teachers murdered, and uh, he tries to solve it by himself, which isn't the brightest thing to do, but <laughs> that's the character we're dealing with. So what was the name of your first book? The Lesson Plan. Okay, and you wrote a sequel. Tell us about the sequel. Yeah, what what uh, made you, you continued the char same character in a second book. Why did you feel, uh, were you drawn to the character? Uh, yeah, there, there's a dysfunctional element to the character that uh, that in real life I wouldn't really I wouldn't want to uh, you know have have that uh, you know following me that kind of uh, it, it, <clears throat> that kind of dysfunctionalism would say, but it works well in in literature, and um, I, I I really had another story for him, and that that the second novel um, where he's trying to um, get his life together uh, in the real world and of course that means getting a, some kind of gig that can support him and of course that he would like to do and uh, in the second novel he had run into the law in the first novel and, and actually did a little bit of jail time so when he comes out of prison in the second novel he can't do the PI gig anymore so he takes up with a gangster in Santa Monica who wants him to do uh, a job for him, uh, kind of like a just uh, an errand kind of job, but it's overseas. It's in it's in Odessa, Ukraine, uh, and uh, this mobster in Santa Monica is has a Russian background. And he has uh, <clears throat> people he knows in Odessa, and he just wants Robert Clayman, Bob Clayman, the uh, protagonist, to 
do a little favor for him and go over there. And of course, it'll mean some good money for Mr. Clayman. And uh, so he thinks it's a it's an easy thing to do. It's it's a no brainer. Of course, it <laughs> turns out to be a lot. Well, and the title of your second book is well, it's called Seasoned to Kill, and Clayman has a lot to learn in the in the uh, how to how to live a life of crime. And he does learn a lot in this novel, and uh, you know, he—you might say my books are uh, <clears throat> kind of like a, uh, a way that Clayman has grown from incompetent criminal to a competent criminal, and uh, which leads me to my current novel, uh, where. I'm right what I'm writing right now and almost finished and it's still the same protagonist it's going to be part of a series and uh, <clears throat> it's called uh, at this point it's called not for hire but Clayman uh, tries to be the the criminal that that is say the, you know the the kind of criminal that we all think is on the top of the uh, pyramid of criminality and that's the hitman and he is so desperate in this third novel that he uh, he takes on a job that, that does require uh, murder for hire however he only takes on he only takes it on because he finds out that the guy's a real creep and a real you know guy deserves to get hit so to speak and so he tries to become tries to make a really good good money, uh, good killing, I was going to say, <laughs> by killing somebody for uh, a rich banker in uh, Beverly Hills who who, uh, who was um, <clears throat> swindled out of $50 million. And then, of course, there's a whole background story to that and uh, plays out. Yeah. Okay. Um, what the authors have influenced you along the way? Any in specific? Well, I have to say, because I'm writing in the crime genre, uh, Raymond Chandler really, st I, I wrote a number of books by him, and I, Ross MacDonald, um, but, but Chandler, uh, the, the uh, you know, the, the, the um, patter that he has and the, uh, the um, protagonist's uh, point of view, and uh, it's just wonderful, he's a real master, and I, I mean that's that's one side of it. I also, of course, like um, Salinger, uh, J.D. Salinger, um, and all his stuff. Because um, there also there's a, the protagonist has a uh, this very particular point of view, and um, and it's first person. Uh, and you wrote your novels in first person. Oh yeah, yeah, and, and first person. Also, I have to say that I was very influenced years ago by uh, Gunter Grass, this Tin Drum. It's also another novel that plays out in the uh, in the protagonist protagonist's head first person and uh, and the world view and all that and the weird you know the, the weirdness of it all I suppose so what advice you have for anyone who, who wants to start writing well start writing <laughs> just do it just do it you never know where it takes you um, I wasn't a writer I uh, was in my 40s when I started and um, uh, you know, I, I'll say I do it for as an outlet, as a hobby, whatever. And it turned out that I was uh, uh, I was able to put out enough stuff, enough words, enough material to create some books around it. And uh, I suggest that if you really want to do it, do it. See where it takes you. Mm -hmm.